Hi, this is Steve Doherty. I uh, was honored to serve as the juror for the Rising Tide exhibition organized by the Maryland Federation, which will result in a, an online exhibition only. Um, so it, it's a, you know, which is, I think we, there are more and more of these all the time because I think people are getting accustomed to viewing artwork uh, on online as opposed to in person. So um, maybe a little bit, bit about me. I uh, edited art magazines for about 40 years, um, a whole variety of them, uh, mostly showing representational artwork. Um, and the last magazine I edited was called Plein Air, uh, which is what I do. It's outdoor painting. And you, can, you may be able to see some of my Plein Air sketches uh, on the ledge behind me. <clears throat> so I come to this as a painter, um, uh, but I think uh, I spent enough time over 40 years just looking at images and trying to determine um, the quality of the work uh, according to the criteria set by the, the venue, so to speak. So when I judged work for American Artist Magazine, for example, I had to keep in mind what that magazine was uh, uh, advertised as being about. When I've judged shows for watercolor societies or uh, plein air groups, um, it's a little different each time, and especially because each exhibition has certain limitations about the number of works that can be accepted, the number of works by each individual artist, um, things like that. So uh, in this case, I did um, consider the theme as I looked at the work, and I read the captions to determine um, so I knew what the medium was, what the sizes were. Um, although size was less important in this case than in others because there's no physical exhibition. So for example, some of the pieces that were entered were quite large and I'm not sure I would have accepted them into a physical exhibition because they just would have dominated the show in a way that may not have been appropriate, but uh, that was not a factor here. So. The work that I chose was in a wide range of mediums and media and uh, sizes and uh, points of view. The, uh, I think I wrote about this in the um, juror's statement that um, the one it, going into it, the hard part is trying to determine um, how an artist balances a statement, a political, social, religious environmental statement with the, um, the, the kind of personal expectations about it being a work of art. The personal being my own expectations as well as what I perceive to be the expectations of the individual artist. Um, representational work is often criticized for being illustrational. And, and that is to say, that the, the main point of the artwork is to tell the, to connect to a story being told with words. So it's, it's a magazine illustration, the book illustration, its main uh, ob ob objective is to illuminate what's expressed in the words, not necessarily to have the work stand as an independent, independent work of art. So the artists who entered this show had that kind of problem to deal with. Um, how do you make a statement that is at once artistic and also relevant to the topic? And it was a pretty, you know, it's a pretty tough topic to deal with, rising tides, because, um, you know, there are all sorts of implications of what, what that is, uh, how it affects one's life, how it affects the global community, um, and um, so trying to get a comprehensive statement into one image uh, and to make that per image independent of a particular written or verbal expression 
was tough. And I, you know, my, I, I salute the artists who entered this show because I think they, they grappled with that quite effectively. There, I can't think of any of the work that was submitted, which I thought was uh, kind of trivial or um, totally linked to some kind of political or environmental statement. I think each one of them um, had at its core a, a personal and uh, expression from the artist that came from their personal feelings about the topic but also their uh, association with the medium that they chose. So they, you know, printmakers were very comfortable using printmaking. The photographers were comfortable with using photography. Um, and that, that elevated the work overall. And I was pleased that um, I wasn't rejecting anything because it was sort of, um, obvious and mundane. It, I think in every case, the artists gave serious thought to the topic and couched their expression in terms of their own uh, visual orientation, their, um, their aesthetic uh, preferences and, um, and the personal, you know, personal expression. So, um, you know, I was, uh, my hats are my hat is off to all of the artists who entered this show because I think they tackled the difficult process very effectively, and I think the resulting show will be much better for that uh, commitment that the artists made. So that's overall, and I think um, you know I, every judge has his or her uh, kind of point of view, so to speak. And, um, you know, I, I guess I could be honestly say I was found it most comfortable to deal with the images that were um, paintings or prints. Um, I got my MFA at Cornell in printmaking and studied um, intaglio, screen printing, relief printing, um, photo processes and all of that. And um, so, you know, when I look at an etching or I look at it with kind of affection, but also from a very personal point of view, similarly with painting, because I do a lot of painting, mostly plein air, but um, I've done all sorts of painting. And so it was very easy for me to kind of apply my own personal aesthetic and, and to the, that work. Um, the photography, I've not, never been a photographer myself, but at the end of the day, image making is image making. And especially when you're talking about two dimensional, I mean, uh, digital images. I mean, if I, if this was going to, if I had to go then to the gallery and judge the original works of art, um, surface appearance, uh, presentation, um, use of materials, all of that kind of would, would factor in, but it, it doesn't in this case, you know, I don't really look, I don't really get deeply involved in, you know, how the paintment was manipulated, how the, how the size or the proportions of the photograph mattered to the end result or of any of that sort of stuff. So it was a little different than if I were looking at the originals and making judgments about them. Um, in choosing the award winners, I tried to highlight um, pieces that I thought really did a very effective job of dealing with the subject of rising tides in whatever way the artist chose. Um, and secondly, uh, how they work with the materials. Um, the uh, the paint, the print, the etching materials, the photographs. Um, there were some three dimensional pieces as well. So, you know, I um, I have a certain respect for professional craftsmanship, and um, I've you know written about art processes and work with a lot of different art processes. So, um, I get concerned about you know how the work is actually created. 
Um, but at the, you know, at the end of the day, it, it's, it, it's like judging any other kind of vid, vid, visual image. Um, there's a kind of impact that comes across in the work. There is some message in this case, dealing with environment. Um, uh, I think um, some uh, artists probably feel the whole impact of rising tides more than others. Uh, given depending on where they live, you know, if you're in Manhattan or the Maryland shore or, um, you know, in the coast of Florida, um, you live with the impact of rising tides all the time. It affects your, your life. It affects your future. It, you know, it's, it's a, you see that on a daily basis and I'm sure it, it affects how you respond when you're creating a work of art. Um, it isn't to say that other people can't understand and empathize with the, what's happening, um, but I think people who live in coastal communities have no, can't deny the impact it has on, on their own lives. Um, so I think that, you know, it, in, part of the creative process, I think probably comes from this um, deeper understanding and uh, lifelong experience that artists have in dealing with rising tides. Um, and that's very evident, you know, the photographs I think were particularly dramatic in dealing with that. The ones that I really liked and singled out had a, a simplicity in the, the elements chosen. Uh, for example, a, um, a chair sort of sitting in the water um, with a skyline in the distance. Um, that's all it took to sort of put, you know, to imply the human connection or disconnection to rising tides. Um, the, uh, there were others where uh, there were remnants of piers uh, sticking out of the water. There were uh, collapsed and decaying uh, structures in the water, um, which in very simple but direct terms uh, uh, kind of confronted the cost of what happens to rising tides. Um, the, you know, some of the, the painters were able to do um, in some ways more imaginative images, the things which don't exist in, real, in reality, uh, like um, imposing words on top of a landscape image, um, making a, you know, a subtle but at the same time powerful statement about uh, the, the subject, either raising a question um, about, you know, the, um, the impact of rising tides or whatever. Others um, just use traditional painting material ways of dealing with the power of water, uh, the transience of water, the um, insistence of water, um, you know, all ways of, you know, in a very personal and, and as I say, not illustrational way, uh, offering the, that, that artist response to what's happening around them, uh, around all of us. So, um, you know, that was overall, you know, it, I know it would be, when I've judged shows, sometimes I think the best thing I can do is talk to artists individually about their work, because I think, all of us want to get another person's response to what we have created, um, not necessarily in a critical way, but if to just what comes across to that to the judge or the critic, uh, and what doesn't. So you know, when I can look at my painting and it, it's you know think it's about one thing, and then a, a friend will look at it and say, you know, they respond to something completely different that I, than I imagined. So I know it's helpful to get individual critiques, 
Uh, and that's one benefit, I guess, to having a physical exhibition with an opening reception where artists can um, you kind of push the judge against the wall and say, why, why did you pick my work? Or why didn't you give me a prize? Or why did you reject my work? Um, and, you know, it's, it can be awkward, but at the same time, I think we all need some kind of a, in, you know, independent response to our work. I mean, we can know, we know what our teachers might say. We know what our family members might say. We know what our fellow art, artists might say, but, um, it's good to hear from somebody who has no, doesn't know you personally, has no association with you other than the fact that you've got this work of art on the wall and then respond to it. And, you know, I like those situations. What I, what I don't like when I've been critiqued is when, when somebody thinks they know my work or know what I've done in the past and makes the judgment based on that rather than on the particular pieces that I've submitted. Um, so, uh, you know, it's an, it can be a difficult situation. But anyway, I'm, I'm talking about something which I'm not able to do, but I, I guess only to say that I, I, I wish there was a way to give people individual responses to the work um, because I think that could be helpful to them. And also to me, I mean, I like knowing more about who the artist is, what he or she was thinking about, why he, what, why he or she made certain decisions and, um, you know, try that. Okay, so what's on the screen <clears throat> is the photo collage by Christine Helms, uh, digital photograph. Um, so, first of all, I was just really impressed with how Christine um, com combined a bunch of images and colors and textures um, to. Uh, to make you know, this final image. And there's this big uh, kind of almost uh, architectural piece of being photographed by people and uh, above uh, water. Um, so what I love about this is it's endlessly fascinating. It uh, deals with a lot of elements that are recognizable, and yet at the end you have to kind of stare, study it, and evaluate it, or uh, in order to get some sense of how the artist is using the medium to deal with the topic of rising tides. Um, and I just like, really liked the choice of elements that the artist selected and combined, um, the way in which she. Um, kind of put an audience in front of us with the figures staring and maybe photographing the, the landscape forms, the water, the sky, um, and the structure above it. Um, the introduction of what looks like uh, religious architecture and sculpture, um, not specific, but the, uh, it, it seems like there is a kind of Madonna-like figure. There are um, uh, columns for something that could be uh, a, a religious piece of architecture. Um, it, anyway, it's a comp, you know. So what I loved is that there's a great deal to think about, to evaluate, to try to understand, and yet um, even while we know what the overall topic is, we need to spend time really figuring out what the artist has, uh, how, he, how she has dealt with the subject of rise and tide and a collection of images that were important to her. So um, anyway, I think 
the whole thing is really quite impressive. I mean, even to some of the details where it almost looks like there's clothes on a line and uh, um, buildings being washed away and on it just amazing piece of uh, imagery, uh, which I guess was photo manipulated. Um, somebody who has better computer skills than I do. So uh, the next one that comes up is um, the etching. This is a line etching, uh, cattails in the foreground, shoreline, industrial buildings in the back. Um, and um, I really just, I, I like the whole image and the fact that it was a linear etching uh, and done with a, in a lot of foul biting and um, texture, just, you know, really captivated me. I think, you know, what I, the same thing I could apply to the first, the photograph is there's something, if, if it's an image that gives me a lot to think about, a lot to explore, uh, it really does engage me in, um, in a direct way. And this one does that. It's just a relatively, relatively simple image. You know, it's, the etching is all linear. Um, it's a vertical, um, but, uh, you know, and there's a, a kind of hatching, cross-hatching kind of style of, of line etching. Um, but, you know, it really makes the point of put, it puts me in a landscape that in the foreground is sort of idyllic, you know, they're cattails, there's a shoreline, and then you get to the back and there are these looming structures um, and a tree that's, you know, as really made up of textures. Um, it's probably not a really large uh, image, given that I'm just looking at the signature, which is etched into the plate. Um, or the initials, I guess. Um, but um, it's a very powerful image. And, um, you know, I, I was very impressed with it. But, you know, again, sort of on the same level with the photograph, it's not just what it says, but what it, the opportunity it gives me to kind of just keep thinking and at looking and wondering about what the artist has done. The next one I have is by Catherine Farrell, uh, sunk, Sunken Barge. Um, and this is a very painterly, um, uh, almost verging on the abstract kind of presentation of a rep, you know, what could otherwise be a representational image. That it is the, you know, she's got accurate perspective and, um, delineation of the background, foreground, middle ground. Um, and even though it's rather loosely painted, it has a real impact with that barge that's clearly sinking into the water, into the water um, that with a, with a paint applied in such a way that it's, it's, it creates a sense of agitation and um, uh, energy, uh, the sailboats that are in the back um, are also, you know, they're painted with the same, in the same kind of loose way that um, gives you a feeling, a, a kind of an uneasy feeling about them and where they are and what's happening to them. Um, and then these nice diagonal shapes that take you into this pictorial space and around it. Um, so I, I think overall it has a real power uh, to it um, that it, I felt that impressed me anyway. So, uh, okay, now I get to the photograph by Mike Iserman, High Tide at Tidal Basin. Um, this is the one I kind of referred to before, which is of the park bench submerged in water with the uh, Washington Monument in the, um, in the distance. Um, and then just piece of uh, 
trees uh, on the left hand side to uh, show you where the land is relative to this park bench. Um, and I, as I said earlier, it had a real power for me because the bench not only makes a statement about being, you know, the piece being stuck out in the water as the tide rises, but it's a space where the viewer can imagine himself or herself sitting. So it put, in a way, it, it, it puts the viewer into the picture using some, a seat um, as if to say, you know, not only is this thing out of place, but it's a place where you ought to put yourself to really understand what this is all about. Um, similarly, the skyline, you know, has just a few elements, the, the Washington Monument, a little piece of another building uh, and the distant shoreline. Um, so it, it, it's been pared down as, you know, in some way, and it could have been, the artist could have manipulated the photograph to clean it up and make it, uh, you know, a, a trim statement, which was very effective. I mean, even the, the little bit of branches sticking out over on the left-hand side, which are without leaves, uh, even though the other vegetation suggests that there ought to be leaves on it. So that then even that says, you know, um, rising tides impacts the vegetation along the shoreline uh, in a very direct way. Um, the, um, finally, the, the thing, you know, I'm, once somebody once said to me, all paintings, all photographs are about light, light and shadow, um, not really about the objects depicted. And, you know, it, that applies in this case where you get the light hitting the edge of the boards on the bench and the light hitting the Washington Monument in, in such a way that it reflects sharply and cleanly in the water below. Um, a light that shows you calm water, that it's not turbulent, it's just, but it's sort of like, um, something coming at you in a very direct, quiet and, um, and menacing kind of way. Um, so I think all of those have been done very well. All, uh, the whole thing is done well. Let's see what next. Okay, this is, I, men I mentioned the uh, uh, imposing words in, um, in painting. So this is the, uh, by Robert Muller, Mullinex, called Por, uh, Portend, uh, Oil and Canvas. So it's a painting of waves um, in a kind of glowing uh, light of, e of morning or evening. And then uh, the word portend uh, subtly superimposed over the landscape painting, the, the water painting. Um, so, you know, the, the word and the image get you to get me at least, and probably other viewers to think about, you know, what is, what is this portent? What, what is, what are we looking at here? What's likely to happen in, a, in this place? where there, are, there is no land, there are no boats, there are no people. Um, it's just these pretty dramatic waves, um, which are apparently out in the, wa out in the distance because they're not crashing towards the shoreline. They're, they're drifting and um, flowing. Um, so you're kind of feel, you're put in, out into the deep water you're not comfortably on shore. You're not comfortably in a boat looking at this. You're just in the midst of this uh, pattern of water uh, with some foam on it. And um, then given the word portend to consider in the context of this 
overall landscape. So um, I guess, you know, if you, the, the critique I'm offering is um, that in all these, in the case of these award winners, it's in part the impact of the image itself, but then the whole, uh, the, you know, the door that it opens to a whole thought process about rising tides and a thought process that I, you know, it's not obvious, it's not uh, universal necessarily. It's, uh, these are thoughts that the artist have, have given me um, or expected me to have. Um, and I think it's all very effective. Um, you know, it's very hard to rank uh, a painting against a print, against a, a photograph, um, or at least in, you know, difficult for me. I, I, there's, you know, why would one be necessarily better than the other, worth more money than the other? I don't know. Unless, you know, if it was, um, if it was a show where it was like just plein air paintings or just still life paintings or something, um, that the subject matter was really narrowed and the context narrowed, I might see one of them as being outstanding or more significant than the other, but not in this case. I think they're in a, sh in a show where a l there was a lot of good work and these five, which, uh, in my estimation, are particularly worthy um, of review and examination and celebration, really. So, um, you know, I congratulate all the artists whose work will be in the online show. Um, I think, you know, you've done a terrific job of handling a subject that could be tough to work with. Um, and, um, expressed your opinions within the context of your whole uh, oeuvre, as the French say. Um, everything, you know, whatever it is you are about as a photographer, a printmaker, a painter, a sculptor. Um, so um, I hope that's helpful. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, I always say, you know, um, in my experience, uh, when I've put work in a show, invariably the judge uh, is an idiot and makes terrible decisions. <laughs> so if you want to dismiss me for that reason, it's okay. Um, we're dealing with, you know, I mean, art is not uh, an act. It, it, it's hard to measure art, one art piece against another, one artist against another, um, to make judgments about things. I think the whole thing, hopefully, if we just sort of use it as a, con as a point of conversation for the artist to make some kind of a statement, for the viewer to interpret it or bring something else to it, um, then, it, 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 then it's accomplishing something worthwhile. One thing I think we've all learned through the pandemic is um, the value of using digital media to communicate, to educate, to share things with each other. Um, you know, I, we used to have conference calls when I worked in Manhattan and um, we didn't see anybody, it was just voices. And the voices coming from a conference room where there were six people sitting around a table were totally confused. And so we sort of went from that chaos um, to several different systems that can be used for really meaningful conversation between people. You know, I've, I've had personal conversations. I've, I've been on board meetings that have been on Zoom. And I think in the process, we've all learned um, that there is a place for this. I mean, clearly one-on-one -on -one personal conversation, interacting with people is great. Looking at works of art, in the you know as in real in real time is wonderful. Um, there are certain benefits to seeing. You know, I mentioned earlier that if I were judging pieces on a wall, the surface quality would become important. The scale of the piece, the framing, presentation, overall. So 
there are other, you know, there are other good reasons to be looking at work in person. But at the same time, you know, I think if you think back to your own how how you learned about art in general, you probably sat in a classroom where slides were projected on the wall or digital images were sent to you. I mean, how many of us have seen all those great works that have been important to the history of art and have influenced us? I mean, you know, it, would we know about the great Renaissance paintings, the great, um, you know, any of, the, any of the great American paintings, um, if it wasn't for photographs, reproductions in bo books, slide uh, reproductions, digital images, um, and even now, you know, if, if somebody mentions an artist or I think about an artist, I mean, I, I subscribe to Tumblr and I sign up to see images by a whole bunch of artists that I like. So, you know, I see a lot of paintings by Twachman and Sargent and uh, all these artists, and I'll never see the original works. But um, I love getting, becoming familiar with the range of what the artists have done, and um, and also and all of that. So, you know, it we're not we're not trying to replace live exhibitions. We're not trying to replace museum exhibitions, but we can take advantage of this new technology and the experience we've had over the last year and a half. Um, to broaden our awareness and our knowledge, I think, of, uh, of what is out there. Mm -hmm.